is that orthopedic surgeon should think about smoking nicotine and cottonine level. This patient is a smoker. I should ask him to stop smoking before the elective surgery. Should I get the nicotine cottonine level? Cottonine test may be ordered for evaluation of the patient tobacco use status. Cottonine levels can be detected in the blood, urine, or saliva. Cottonine is found in tobacco. It is the main metabolite of nicotine. It is the best biomarker for exposure to tobacco smoke. The level of cottonine in the blood is proportionate to the amount of exposure to tobacco smoke, which also includes exposure to secondary smoke. Cottonine levels less than or equal to 10 are consistent with no active smoking. Cottonine levels from 10 to 100 signals light smoking. Cottonine levels above 300 signals heavy smoking, more than 20 cigarettes per day. The urine concentration of cottonine is 46 times more than in the blood or saliva, making the urine test more sensitive in detecting low concentration exposure. Active smokers may reach levels of 500 in the urine. Smoking is harmful not only to the lungs and heart, it is harmful to the bones and to the soft tissues and also can cause cancer. Smoking decreases wound healing and may cause surgical site infection and pneumonia after total hip or total knee replacement. Smoking is a risk factor for osteoporosis. Smokers are three times more likely to develop chronic back pain. There is a correlation between spine fusion and the smoking. The smoking and the other tobacco use play an important role in inhibiting bone healing with increased risk of non-union of fractures and pseudoarthrosis or non-fusion in spine surgery. Pseudoarthrosis of the spine after a spine fusion can be up to five times more in a smoker than in a non-smoker. The nicotine causes vasoconstriction of the small vessels and decreases the blood flow to the area that's already compromised by the injury or by the surgery. There is an increased risk of non-union and decreased patient satisfaction after a spine fusion. There is also increased risk for recurrent herniation and reoperation following lumbar disc surgery in smokers. The risk is reduced if the patient quit smoking permanently. There is an increased incidence of rotator cuff tears in a smoker than in a non-smoker. Also, there is a correlation between smoking and rotator cuff surgery. The results are better in non-smoker. Patients will have less pain and higher degree of function if they are non-smokers. Smoking in general, whatever directly or passively, has a serious negative effect on the musculoskeletal system with increased pain in the neck and the lower back and increased rotator cuff tears and shoulder dysfunction with less than satisfactory outcome after rotator cuff surgery. Smoking is probably the single most important factor in post-operative complications. The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeon is taking an active role in teaching and educating the physician about the risks of smoking.
Smoking cessation before surgery appears to benefit the patients that are undergoing surgery. The longer the cessation of smoking, the better the result. The patient can reduce the risk by stopping smoking before surgery. The physician should engage with the patient and provide the educational material that will benefit the patient. Multidisciplinary team, biofeedback, and behavioral therapy are usually helpful. Obesity, diabetes, and smoking are very serious health hazards. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.